Hello children, in the previous video, I, we started about convex lens, all the six cases, ray diagrams, how to draw them and um, how to make the images, okay. So most of you had done the homework, those of you who have still not done, please make sure you uh, do it as early as possible, okay. And now we are going to see the applications. I want you to turn to the table in page 116. Page 116 here. Okay. Now, uh, so this table gives you position of object, position of image, size of image, nature, application. So, all this three we used to write, this four we used to write it as characteristics. Yeah. Application is something new. First one. At infinity, when object is at infinity, it is used as a burning glass. Um, I don't know how many of you have uh, played with this. Yeah, it is. Um, um, I've seen children playing with this kind of a thing. So, what they can do is, with a convex lens, what you can do is, so first case, okay, so you keep a lens and focus try to focus, keep the lens facing the sun rays. So, the sun rays coming here, parallel rays, they will all get, um, they will uh, convert at a point that is the principal focus and uh, if you keep a paper here, okay, if you keep a paper here, the paper will start burning exactly from this point where the focus is there, there the fire will start. You can just literally see the paper burning. Why? All the sun rays because of this convex lens, they have got focus to a one point and because they are all focused to one point, the temperature becomes so high that it can reach the ignition temperature and it can even start burning. Okay. So, that is why it is called burning glass. So, case 1 is used as a burning glass. Second, camera lens. Okay. So, a distant object, if you want to catch an image of it, you will use this case, case 2 in camera lens. Case 3, in a terrestrial telescope. In a terrestrial telescope. Case 4, slide projector. Okay, you will have seen projectors hanging uh, the top in your classrooms. So, um, there we need a magnified image of a small object. So, that is where they use it as light projector. So, case 4, slide projector. Case 5, collimeter of spectrometer. So, spectrometer is a device that you will be studying in 11th and 12th. There is another thing called search lights. Search lights. This you would have seen children. Um, people going into mines, okay, on the forehead they will be wearing a um, search light. What is the difference between that and a torch light? In a torch light, the rays that come out, from a torch light, the rays that come out will be going diverged like this. Whereas, search light, the one that uh, they wear on the forehead, the rays will be going parallel, okay, parallel beam of light you will see going out of this, these are called search lights which they wear on the forehead, I am sure you are able to recognize what I am talking about. So that is also one of the uh, application of case 5 because see in case 5, when you keep the object between F and 2F, when you keep the bulb between F and 2F, I am sorry, case 5 object at F. So, when you keep the bulb exactly at the focus of this lens, what will happen? Parallel beams of light will, light will go and that can be used in um, mines and when the people go into mines because they wanted a focus. Now, if it is a torch light, okay, if it is a torch light that will give you diverge. Okay, torch light may they use this one. They keep the bulb between F and O, so you get a divergent beam. Okay. So, this will be spread over a large area, but this because it is concentrated in a smaller area, it will be little more, much more brighter, the light will be brighter in this area, okay. So, I would like you to write this also along with spectrometer search lights, okay. Case 6 is the most commonly used 
um, case that is as a magnifying glass. You know what's a magnifying glass, no? So if the letter is too small, you want to magnify it, then you keep a convex lens, the size will increase. The other day when I showed you a co convex lens also, I show, uh, you could see how the letters were magnified. Okay, children. Another thing I want you to pay attention is, see the size of the image. Now, when it comes to size of image, the first one, now basically we are trying to compare all the six together. Now, one by one in the previous video, you, show, you drew all the diagrams one by one. That was easy. Now, when you do a comparative study, then you will know what is the difference. Okay. So, um, in the first case, the image size is highly diminished. Highly diminished. Okay. In the second case, it's only diminished. Now, don't think both are same. Okay. This is highly diminished. This is diminished. Here, same size. Magnified. Again, highly magnified. See the difference between these two. This is only magnified. This is only highly magnified. And this is magnified. Now, what is important, so important in paying attention to this? Now, how the questions will come? Now, very rarely they ask you to write, draw, draw a ray diagram when object is beyond 2f. No, no, very rarely they ask. They never ask to be very frank. All that they ask is based on either the application. So, they can ask you, draw the ray diagram for convex lens where it is used in a camera lens. Okay, so you should know that means second case. Draw the ray diagram of convex lens when it is used as a magnifying glass. That means you should know it is case 6. Is it clear? That's one way of asking. The other way is based on the nature of image. So the first 5 you can't differentiate all are real and inverted. So the 6th case, this is a very common question. Draw the ray diagram where a convex lens forms a virtual and magnified virtual and magnified image. So, this should be only the sixth case. Now, the other way of asking is, they can ask, draw the ray diagram for a convex lens when it forms the image of same size as the object. So, what should you know? Object should be at 2f. Or they can ask, when it forms a highly diminished image. So, be careful. If it was diminished image, you would have done case 2. If it was highly diminished, you should have done case 1. Same way, if it was magnified, case 4, highly magnified, case 5. Now, you can have a doubt that these two are magnified. Now, if they are asking case 6, they will definitely mention that it's a virtual magnified image. Can you understand? So, if it's a virtual magnified, it is case 6. Real magnified, then case 4. Is it clear, children? So, you don't have to memorize the table, but then you should be able to um, compare it and study so that you will be able to draw it. Now, another conclusion I want you to um, see here. If you see all the, uh, compare all the cases, okay. In every case, the object is shifted from infinity. First we took infinity. Infinity means very far. Then far away distance. Then beyond 2f. Then at 2f, okay. The next case, you know, was at 2f then between. So, you are moving the object from infinity towards the lens. From infinity, you are moving the object towards the lens. Yeah. Now, see how the image is going. In the first case, image was at f. Okay. Here focal plane, here focus. Now, in the second case, it is between f and 2f. Third case, it is at 2f. Fourth case, beyond 2f. 5th case infinity and 6th case is a virtual image. Can you see a pattern being followed here? The image keeps shifting away from the lens. As the object comes towards the lens, the image keeps shifting away from the lens. First it was focus, then beyond f, then add to f, beyond to f, add infinity, then the virtual image. So, this conclusion I wanted you to note down because there can be question like this.
state the change in the position size and nature of image when the object is brought from infinity up to the convex lens now we only talked about the position see the size also there is a pattern children size keeps increasing first it was diminished to a point it's like just a point then highly diminished then diminished then same size so if you see the size it is gradually increasing size is gradually increasing and nature of image it remains real and inverted and the last case it comes back to virtual okay so i want you to so in your book if you see basically the theory part they have given that only if you see the theory part you can read through it inference inference means basically conclusion okay so they have just try to compare all these six cases okay so um, i have give, uh, i have made i i have written a statement like this which is a combined a uh, conclusion for all the six cases when the object at a far away distance is brought close to the convex lens image shifts away from the lens and the size keeps on increasing you can pause the video and please note it down okay so when the object is brought close to the lens from an infinity image shifts away from the lens and size keeps on increasing okay so that will be the answer for 27th question okay hope it is clear children so this is um, what you should know a comparative study of all the six cases um yeah now we go to the next thing that is concave lens concave lens so as i told you there are only two ray diagrams for concave lens object at infinity then object anywhere in front of the lens okay now first of all how to draw a convex concave lens okay uh, again as i told you you first draw this uh, middle line dotted line okay take five lines 1 2 3 4 5 6 so you draw a dotted line like this so for convex you drew like this and like this for convex for concave what you do you draw two lines like this and draw one side like this one side like this concave means they cave inside okay it's like a cave so this is how a concave ray should be as i told you don't just draw any mota lens like this okay try to be as thin as draw it as thin as possible first we have to know the rules before drawing the ray diagram we should know the rules now the first rule so this is optical center okay f f as usual take 2 to cm okay now the first rule says any ray passing parallel to the principal axis after refraction will go away from the lens you know that because con concave is a diverging lens so the ray will go away from the lens now but there is one condition this ray that goes like this when you extend it backward it should go through f so what you do you keep your scale between these two points so you keep your scale okay between these two points draw a dotted line and then extend it like this is it clear why i am telling you to do that is sometimes you know what children do uh, you just okay you draw a parallel ray and you draw some diverged ray when you extend it backward might be your f is here but that ray might be going here that is wrong so you should diverge it in such a way that the extended ray goes through f so do like this you keep your scale join these two points put the dotted line then extend it is it clear so the ray that is passing parallel to the uh, principal axis after refraction goes diverged in such a way that when that ray is extended back it passes through the principal focus okay the rule 2 uh, is converse of this 
if a ray is going to come okay but that ray, uh, that rule we don't use it okay you can go to the rule 3 rule 3 is so principal axis here and optical center here any ray passing through optical center comes back undeviated so you should draw a ray like this and it will come back along the same path okay so mostly we'll use these two rules to draw the ray diagrams okay so now come to the write the next heading ray diagrams So ray diagrams for concave lens, ray diagrams for concave lens. So as I told you, there are only two cases. So first case one, first diagram, object at infinity, object at infinity. So, for object at infinity, so I have drawn uh, principal axis, same 2 centimeter from O to F, and then F to F to F, 2 centimeter. Okay. So, let us take um, maybe two parallel rays. Okay. So, as I told you, your incident ray should come till this center line. So, these, ray, these rays after refraction they are going to go diverged so what you do put your scale dotted line here extended line dotted line till this and then extended line okay so this is where the image is formed this is where the image is formed so what will be the characteristics of the image highly diminished or diminished to a point or okay highly diminished virtual because it is not the refracted rays are not meeting but only they are extended back they are meeting here so it's a virtual image and always virtual image will be erect and formed at formed at principal focus at f so for concave you remember we always consider this focus only so formed at f okay children so this is a simple one first case come to the second case second case object anywhere in front of lens that means you can have it between f and o at f like beyond 2f at 2f you can have anywhere you will get only one type of image okay so i'm going to take it beyond 2f you can take anywhere at 2f here here anywhere you take you get the same type of ray diagram so one centimeter this is my object a b so a b is my object now let's see how the image will be formed for this now the first ray we should take at least two rays the first ray parallel to principal axis i am applying rule one parallel to principal axis after refraction it's going to go like this so what i do i keep my scale put a dotted line here and an ext extended line this is my first ray okay the second ray i'm going to use the third rule that is ray passing through optical center so what you do keep your scale passing through o and draw a straight line and put a double arrow okay arrow marks don't forget 
ray goes like this, comes back along the same path. Now, so this is one of so this this is one of the refracted ray. This is the other refracted ray, and you know that. Sorry, it's not coming back. It's not mirror children. I'm sorry. It's going to go in this direction itself. Okay. So these are the two refracted rays, and they are diverged. They are not going to meet this side. So when I extend it backward, its extension is this. This one is this, and both will meet here. And that's where my image is formed, A dash, B dash. So, A dash, B dash is my image. Is it clear, children? So, this is my object, this is my image. Let's come to the characteristics or the nature of image. So, diminished, it's not highly diminished, it is diminished. It's smaller than this. So, diminished, then virtual then erect and fourth formed between f and o formed between o, f and o f and o on the same side of object same side of object see so it is always formed between f and o on the same side of object even i keep my object here if I shift, imagine I've taken my object at 2f, okay? Then also you will, this image will be slightly shifted from here to here. Size will be slightly increased, but it will be always between f and o. So that's why form between f and o on the same side of the object. Sometimes to just confuse you, they will ask, draw the ray diagram for convex lens when object is at 2f, okay? So you don't have a specific diagram like that, but just take it at 2f and do it between f and 2f okay don't think that oh there is no specific case anywhere in front of the lens so beyond 2f at 2f between f and 2f anywhere you take you will get the same kind of ray diagram so come to the table now um, same highly diminished diminished uh, see the application this is used in a galilean telescope and this is used in making spectacles for myopic I. Okay, that you'll see in applications. The D part has applications. I'll explain in that. Now, in this, see the conclusion. As the object, now the first case object was at infinity and you had the image at f. Okay. Now, in this case, object is brought closer to the lens and what is happening to the image? Here it was at f. Now it has shifted towards the lens. So, see the conclusion and size will keep on increasing children. See here it was just a dot and here it is like this. Now, at 2f, the size will be little more. Okay. Between f and 2f, the size will be little more. So, what is my conclusion? When the object moves from a large distance towards the lens, image shifts from the focus towards the optical center of the lens and size gradually increases but it always remains smaller than the object. This size, it will never become bigger than this, but when you compare these from the previous one, it will increase. Is it clear? So there is a question 28 which says, state the changes in the position, size and nature of image when the object is brought from infinity up to the concave lens. So the answer will be this one that image shifts from the focus towards the optical center. So first it was at f, then now it keeps shifting towards the optical center and size keeps increasing. These are the, uh, this is the conclusion that you have to write children. And there is a special case here. So I will say that this is a special case when object is at a distance equal to focal length, image is exactly at the midpoint. So if, if you would have had your object here, image will be exactly at the midpoint between O and F. Okay, so these are all the ray diagrams and um, so mostly concave, this diagram comes very often. Now, another thing, let's compare the, so see this case, this also forms a virtual image and in case 6 of convex lens also, there is a virtual image. Yeah. K 
case 6 of convex lens also has a virtual image. Now what is the difference between this virtual image formed by a concave lens and this one formed by a convex lens? This is enlarged, virtual and enlarged whereas this is virtual and diminished, virtual and diminished. So if they ask you which lens forms a virtual and erect, uh, sorry, virtual and enlarged image of the object, you should write, you should say convex lens K6. If they say, ask which lens forms virtual and diminished image, you should know that it is concave lens and this is the diagram. Is it clear? This is one thing that they uh, compare very often. Both of them can produce virtual image but this produces virtual magnified image whereas concave produces virtual and diminished image. So this comparison also you are supposed to know. So children what will you be doing today? So in your notebook you should have drawn this ray diagrams for concave lens case 1 and case 2. So this you would have done along with me as I drew the diagram. Now come to the exercise. I want you to solve question number 6, 10, 11, 27 and 28. Okay, 27 and 28. I told you already what is the answer for 27, 28. Now, 6, 10 and 11. Now, there will be a lot of sub parts. Be very careful. Now, one way of questioning is children, they can give a diagram like this and they ask. See, study the diagram below. Name the lens L and dash. They have not even given the lens, but they have told you to identify the lens. But they have given you an incident ray and refracted ray. So this gives us an idea that it's a the ray is diverging, so it should be concave lens. So you will take a concave lens here. Then what are the points O and O dash called? What are the points O and O dash called? Their principal focus, okay, they are basically principal focus, complete the diagram to form the image, state three characteristics. So one way is they can give you a diagram like this without the lens or they can give you the lens and give you the position of object. The tenth one which you are going to do as homework, the convex lens forms an image of an object equal to the size of the object. So what is your conclusion, which case, case, case three same size okay then there will be some questions also where is the object placed draw a diagram state to more characteristics then 11th question a lens forms an erect magnified and virtual image a lens forms erect magnified and virtual so virtual magnified which lens so they have asked you name the kind of lens convex lens and then where is the object and all that okay so be careful to answer all the sub parts and draw these diagrams 6, 10, 11, 27, 28 are the homework for today. Thank you children.